All right, we're back again to try to we'll see if we can finish this in one shot. So we got to do the upper part, and we have to do the table yet. This has to come out. There's two uh, two half inch bolts in the back here. Those come out, and it looks like actually it looks like all this might come out just by loosening up. Yeah, slick, very slick. So let's get this apart and see what develops. All right, so with the top wheel off, the tire off of it. Now these bearings insert from the outside, and there's actually retaining rings right there to hold the bearings in one spot. So don't try to beat those in, but they will pop out. Same thing. Uh, this one I just took a Phillips head and just tapped it out. You can see where I actually punctured the bearing seal. But we'll take this one on the back side, the peg. Very gently with all this. You're banging the hell out of it. This is these wheels are just cast aluminum. And if you're banging the hell out of it, there's a good chance you could destroy it. Now these bearings are turning now. Well this one was. Made in Canada. 6202 bearing. 6202 bearing is found in a lot of chainsaws too. I probably had these sitting in the shop. The old pit of despair. Put this back around. Before we do anything, let's get that tire on it. Turn it nice and smooth. The spacer block in there, which I really don't like that design. It's that little spacer. It floats in there. I'd rather have something that fills that right up. Okay, let's see what develops. That design is stupid. <laughs> I do not like that. bearings right here probably go more often than anything and these are your your guide bearings this one seized up I'd already uh, I had already loosened that up before but there's no turning of that at all I, I can't do anything with that there's no saving of that bearing So we got our handy dandy new ones here. And they're nice and easy.
I'm just amazed. I really am amazed at how easy this thing is coming apart for as old as it is. It's not too shabby. Much better. Much, much better. Now this is the only part of the whole thing that was hard to move and rusted up. So we took some uh, rust buster and I couldn't even turn this with my fingers before. And it just was not having it. Still, still a little stiff going the one way, but I used uh, this Mars Rust Buster. comes in a little spout and I usually I get that from our local HVAC supply house, Sid Harvey's, if you guys have one around. But this one I couldn't move at all and that's doing really well now. So, to get this bearing out looks a lot more complicated than it is. All we have to do, there's an Allen head on this side, and then this shaft right here unscrews from that. So this is a two-part shaft. I can only get it the rest of the way. Swing this out of the way, if it'll stay. And to gently slide them all apart. Do we have enough room to do it? That's the question. Almost. I accidentally got you guys taking out of frame a little bit on that, taking that apart. The story of my life, out of focus and out of frame, right? Okay. So, we got the rust cleaned off there as best we could. Get some of the other gunk out of here while we're at it. The only spot that's really been hard to take apart is this guy right here, but you got to figure all the sawdust and everything sitting on it over the years. So, this will go in first. And then this guy here. Make sure I put the new bearing on. Wouldn't that suck to get all this together and realize I put the old one on? So this bearing just goes on that inner, I well, know this is really hard to see for you guys, slides that back together. Now the screw goes on the front. I like to spin this on by hand as far as I can, just so I know I'm not cross-threading that. There we go. reason I keep giving you guys a shadow here. It's driving me nuts. Line 
this back up. Make sure you get these to go down straight if you have to take those off. If you don't, they thread or they strip out really easy. I like to put stuff like this down as far as I can, finger tight. That way I can feel the threads going in. And the shoulder on this screw will line everything up nicely. So I set these back as far as I can and I don't touch them again until we go to put the blade back on. So the beauty of these, something I've always liked about stuff like this, nice tools, is a lot of times you have your locator pins all ready to go. So everything kind of lines up right where you need it to. Only two bolts that hold this in. Putting these together, everything usually slides kind of hard on locator pins like this. Kind of try to bring it down at the same rate so you're coming down on it as straight as you can. Again, you want these tight, but you don't want to Hercules them. Because hardened bolts, they snap really easy off inside of castings. Especially smaller ones like this. It's like you don't even know your own strength. Now this guy right here, this adjusts our table for square. That's our stop. We're going to get into that once we get the table and everything back on. So I guess all we have left, all the bearings are done. All that good stuff. I guess I could have done a better job of cleaning that those blocks off. So we have this ready to go. Our bearings on there. Our, our blade guide bearings and all that. This one is driving me nuts. That is ridiculous how tight that is on there. So we're going to get the table cleaned up, get the table on here and then we're going to get the motor and everything hooked up and then we're going to put a blade on it and then we're going to test this thing out see what happens ok, our tabletop is waxed this is ready to go back on it goes this way so you're going to have two lengths, of, two lengths of bolts here. The longer one's going to go on the front where your adjustment knobs are because it has a longer space to travel. I know, common sense, right? So I probably should have adjusted that up. side. There we go, that's a little more like it. Alright, cool. Now we're probably going to have to adjust, oh yeah, probably going to have to adjust the stop, the leveling stop there some, because right now it's showing us at 10 degrees. Well, of course that's looser than hell. That doesn't help, does it? Talking about the uh, oh, there's a little indicator on there.
Okay, we're getting there guys, so let's throw the blade on and see what happens here. end up fighting this damn vacuum hook up. Now on this band saw there is a mark on the back that tells you where to set the tension for each uh, thick or each width of blade. So I'm just going to hit that quick. Yeah. We are there. Let's see where this thing tracks. I just spin this around until I get it where I want it. It's actually really staying nice on there. So, let's get all this set. You see I can just barely turn that a little bit, barely touches. If I push back on just a little bit, barely enough, it'll turn that in. So this guy down here, if I can get this to adjust how I want it, I can do the same thing. Quite a bit of slop right there. I think I can adjust those in. Now, here's one of the majorly important steps. We have a two foot straight edge, our framing square. This right here, this is a very important part of setup. This goes for anything that's belt driven, absolutely anything at all. So, I'm going to get my motor shiv on first, or pulley. Some people call it a shiv, some people call it a pulley. Now what I noticed with this, when I um, took it apart, I noticed these weren't lined up very well. Oh, let's see. If you're going to tap these on very gently, because you can actually drive that shaft of that motor right out of the bearings. Anybody care to know how I know? The big thing is, you want to make sure that set screw is well into that shaft. Now when you get that set, don't tighten that up yet. Leave that right alone. Tell you right now we're way off. So basically what you're looking for, you'll be able to take your straight edge and make sure that this pulley, the wall of this pulley is the same thickness of this one and these ones are. And you take your straight edge and you bring it down until they match. And I can tell you what, Mm 
We've got a ways to go on this one. And I can already tell that either the body of Well, something's out of whack here because when I put these across the pulleys everything should touch everything should line up I really can't go into that much further than what I am now I want to make sure that keyway is completely engaged on that pulley if I go much further into there you know be right into that housing. I remember when I said the other day we weren't going to tighten these, uh, tighten the base bolts up yet. This is why, because I just had to twist that. So I can get it to line up. Thing, make sure you're not rubbing on bolt heads. Okay. Make sure you're not going to catch on these set screws right here. And make sure you have some deflection on that belt. I'm going to have to get a new belt for this one too. Belt's a little shot. Not shot, it just has a good set in it. So it's probably going to give it a little vibration. Alright, let's give it a test, see how it does.
Well, there we go. Our bandsaw is finally working again. Do you guys know how handy that bandsaw would have been to have for the last couple of projects we worked on? Would have been awesome for that planer stand. But now that is one more piece of the puzzle because I plan on doing a few fancy things with this cabinet build and the bandsaw is going to help us out with that, save us a lot of work done by hand. I'll probably get a couple more blades. Oh, I was going through all the old blades I had and they're, <laughs> they're beat. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, uh, if you're new to having a bandsaw, owning one, and this goes for if you have a bandsaw mill, take the tension off that blade when you're not using it. That's what That will destroy the tires on that blade and it doesn't help the bearings to have that constant tension pulling against just one side of them all the time. So keep that in mind when you're done using it. Loosen up that tensioner. If you have the Delta 14 inch, it'll have markings on the back that'll show you where to set the tension on that blade, but you also have to keep in mind that if you keep that thing screwed down all the time, you're, that spring's going to end up compressing. It's not going to stretch back out the way it needs to. So that is definitely one thing to keep in mind. And if you're having trouble maintaining tension on your blades, maybe check that spring. May need a replacement. So rebuilding one of those is fairly easy. It's pretty straightforward. Most things come apart pretty easily. The Upper flywheel or the upper band wheel gave me a little bit more problems than the one we did before, but not too bad. A lot of that was operator error, forgetting how to take it apart properly. Um, we have everything's adjusted right down to the nuts now. We have our, uh, our blade guides, rollers and scrapers or whatever you want to call them. Those are all adjusted now. They're hitting where they should. So. I'm happy with it, very happy, and I'll tell you what, that started much smoother than it has in a long time. No vibration. If I uh, put a better belt on there, which we'll have to do that, that will go a long way towards taking out any of the vibration. And I mean, there's really, like standing there, this floor, this floor, this wooden floor being only an inch thick right now, you feel every little bit of vibration on the floorboards. I mean, it's good and beefy. There's nothing really going to fall through it unless I get really stupid with what I put up here. But other than that, I mean, everything should hold just fine. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I didn't have my shop helper tonight. She was a big hit on the last bandsaw video. But uh, yeah, super excited to get that done. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.